Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. A huge breakthrough for the January 6th committee. They have secured an interview with their biggest and most important witness yet, Donald Trump's White House counsel, Pat Cipollone. This comes after the committee spent weeks pressing Cipollone to testify. In fact, last Wednesday, uh, they issued him a subpoena, and Vice Chair Liz Cheney even made this direct appeal during a hearing last month. Our committee is certain that Donald Trump does not want Mr. Cipollone to testify here. Indeed, our evidence shows that Mr. Cipollone and his office tried to do what was right. They tried to stop a number of President Trump's plans for January 6th. But we think the American people deserve to hear from Mr. Cipollone personally. He should appear before this committee, and we are working to secure his testimony. Well, they have it secured. Cipollone now scheduled to testify this Friday, just two days from now. The interview will be behind closed doors, but it will be videotaped, so the committee will be able to play portions of it at future hearings, as they've done for lots of the witnesses they've interviewed. Now, part of the reason that Pat Cipollone's testimony is such a big deal is because of the role that he played in the White House, White House counsel. And to understand that role, here's just some historical context. During the Watergate hearings, the breakthrough witness was none other than Richard Nixon's White House counsel, John Dean. His testimony in June of 1973 cracked open the investigation. I began by telling the president that there was a cancer growing on the presidency, and that if the cancer was not removed, the president himself would be killed by it. I also told him that it was important that this cancer be removed immediately because it was growing more deadly every day. Now, that infamous line, which echoes down through history about the cancer growing on the presidency, it was a public acknowledgment from Dean that people within the White House, Dean and others and the president, knew what they were doing was wrong, that they were up to no good. They realized what they were doing was criminal. They engaged in a criminal cover-up knowingly. And I thought about John Dean and that line, cancer on the presidency, as Cassidy Hutchinson testified before the committee last week, because there was that particularly dramatic moment in her testimony when she described how Pat Cipollone was desperate to ensure that Donald Trump did not go lead the mob to storm the Capitol and topple American democracy on January 6th. I saw Mr. Cipollone right before I walked out onto West Exec that morning, and Mr. C Cipollone said something to the effect of, please make sure we don't go up to the Capitol, Cassidy. Keep in touch with me. We're going to get charged with every crime imaginable if we make that movement happen. That line, <laughs> that may rank up there with the John Dean line, cancel the presidency. Pat Cipollone clearly believed that Donald Trump and others in the White House were up to no good on January 6th, that they were engaged in criminal activity. They were attempting to pull off a crime, and he desperately tried to stop them from, quote, getting charged with every crime imaginable. And on Friday, just two days from now, the committee can actually hear that from Pat Cipollone himself. Now, to be clear, Cipollone is a conservative right-wing Republican who first worked for President George H.W. Bush in William Barr's Department of Justice in the 1990s. Cipollone is also a conservative Catholic who co-founded the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast, even counseled Fox host Laura Ingram before her conversion to Catholicism. When Cipollone took over as a White House counsel in 2018, he was a very loyal supporter of Donald Trump. In fact, he led the defense of the ex-president in Trump's first impeachment trial. However, it appears, I guess, again, from what we know in testimony and reporting that after the 2020 election, when Trump tried to overturn the results and overthrow American democracy, Pat Cipollone, to his credit, would not go along. He was very firmly in the anti-coup camp. After the, over the past six committee hearings, we've heard directly from witnesses about how Cipollone rejected Donald Trump's efforts to use the Justice Department to help push his claims of election fraud. Assistant Attorney General Stephen Engel described Cipollone's reaction when Trump tried to promote loyalist Jeffrey Clark, who was prepared to issue a letter falsely claiming the DOJ had found evidence of fraud. I said, Mr. President, I've been with you through four attorneys general, including two acting attorney general, uh, but I couldn't be part of this. The story is not going to be that the Department of Justice has found massive corruption that would have changed the result of the election. It's going to be the disaster uh, of Jeff Clark. Uh, and I think at that point, Pat Cipollone said, yeah, this is a murder-suicide pact, this letter. Cipollone also pushed back against Trump's lawyer John Eastman's infamous coup memo, laying out the scheme for Mike Pence to overturn the election on January 6th. 
the way it was communicated to me was that um, uh, Paso Baloney thought the idea was uh, was nutty and had uh, at one point uh, confronted Eastman uh, basically with the same sentiment. None other than Donald Trump's own son-in-law, Jared Kushner, confirmed, again, in sworn testimony, that Cipollone threatened to resign multiple times during this period as Trump and his allies ignored his protests and continued to plot the coup. And then, on January 6th, Cipollone was in the White House, desperately trying, according to testimony, to stop the insurrection. I see Pat Cipollone barreling down the hallway towards our office and rushed right in, looked at me, said, is Mark in his office? And I said, yes. And I remember Pat saying to him something to the effect of, the rioters have gotten to the Capitol, Mark. We need to go down and see the president now. And Mark looked up at him and said, he doesn't want to do anything, Pat. And Pat said something to the effect of, and very clearly <laughs> had said this to Mark, something to the effect of, Mark, something needs to be done or people are going to die and the blood's going to be on your effing hands. Pat Cimaloni was there. He saw it all up close. He bore witness as Donald Trump attempted, again, to topple American democracy. He was there in the lead up, saw the planning firsthand, tried to stop some of that planning. He was there that day when it was all happening. Throughout the whole thing, Cipollone, who was once a loyal Trump supporter, warned the ex-president and those around him over and over about the crimes they could be charged with if they went through with their plot. So it is a huge development in this investigation for him to appear under oath and tell his story. When Pat Cipollone speaks to the committee on Friday, he could be the John Dean of this investigation. 